Hey guys, we're finally back with a new video, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to add touch input to your games, such as being able to move your player around, rotate the player around, and jump using a handy plugin in Godot. So with that said, let's actually jump right into this video. So as you can see here, we already have a 3D scene, and this is the project we're going to be using. So if we actually test this scene out, you will see that it actually already works for mouse and keyboard and controller, but there's no way of actually taking touch input. And that's what I'm going to be showing you in this video. Also, if you're interested in this specific player controller, the video will be linked somewhere on screen. Anyway, with that said, before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button as it definitely helps the channel out. Now, like I said, uh, we are actually going to be using a plugin to make this work. And to do that, we want to actually go up at the top and then click on asset lib and then we actually want to search for the plugin in question so the plugin we're going to be using is called virtual so as we start typing this it should actually show up so it's called virtual joystick by macrofazio uh, hopefully i didn't mispronounce it but i'm pretty sure i severely butchered the name but anyway this is the plugin we're going to use so simply click download and it should download. Now I'm getting some conflicts here because I have some files that conflict with the download, but we don't actually need them. And in your case, you don't have to worry about it since it's your project is probably different than mine. But all we basically need is the joystick folder and the test folder. Uh, so make sure that those are checked. And then for the previews, we actually don't need the previews. So you can actually uncheck that. So just make sure joystick and test is on and then just click install and it should be installed. So you will see that two new folders were added to our file system. So one is the joystick folder. So if we actually open that up, it should have a textures folder, which also contains a virtual joystick script and a virtual joystick scene. Then there should be a test folder with a player script and a test scene. If we open up the test scene, you will see that it's essentially the preview that was shown at in the plugin page. So we have two virtual joysticks and that all, both have a script attached to them already. And we don't actually have to worry about any of this code here since it's already basically handling everything we need and we don't have to worry about it. Then for the icon, which is the player, it also has a script attached. And as you can see here, the way this plugin works from this example is basically we're using an expert variable to get the node path of the joystick basically. And then we're using that get node the joystick left path, for example, to get a reference to the joystick left and the same thing for the joystick right. And then basically this plugin works in two ways. So you can actually make use of the joystick uh, output directly and use that to do your movement, or you can actually use the input functions in Godot to handle it as well. So that's done by selecting the joystick and in the inspector you will see various actions such as action left, action right, action up, and action down. And then it just works with Godot's input system out of the box so you don't have to really actually write code. So if we actually test this testing out, you will see, and actually we can't actually test it out right now because we haven't enabled touch in our Godot project. So let's go to project and then project settings, scroll down, and then you want to find input devices, and then click on pointing, and then we want to turn on emulate touch from mouse. So turn that on, and then close, and now if we test the test scene out, it should actually work. So as you can see, the left joystick handles the movement of the player, and then the right one basically rotates the player around. So this is pretty much how this plugin works. You can reference the test scene if you need. Anyway, let's actually make this work for our game. So to make it work, we're going to select our GUI, which is just a canvas layer. And then we're going to instance in the joystick scenes into the canvas layer. So go ahead and instance in a virtual joystick. So the virtual joystick scene that we're getting from the joystick folder that we installed essentially. And as you saw, it added our left joystick in our scene and we're actually going to need another one so go ahead and do Control d to duplicate it and then i'm going to go over to layout and do bottom right so that it's anchored on the right side and then i'm just moving it into place uh, you can be more precise about it i'm just eyeballing it basically and then the left joystick is going to handle movement in this case so let me actually rename them so that i can easily tell which one's which so virtual joystick left and then the virtual joystick 2 is going to be called virtual joystick right. 
So like I said, the left stick is going to handle the movement and then the right stick is going to handle the rotation. So we can actually just make use of the actions here in the inspector. So action left, action right, action up and action down. So we want to assign our input uh, inputs to that. So go over to project, project settings, input map, and then I already have a bunch of inputs defined for this project, such as move forward, right, and so forth, even jump, and even looking up and right, and that's for controller support, so you don't have to worry about that. Anyway, we can close that, and then in the inspector with the left joystick selected, we can define those actions here. So the action left is going to be our move left, our action right is going to be the move right, action up is going to be move underscore forward, which is what I believe I named it, and then action down is going to be move back in my case. In your case it might be different, uh, so just put what your movement actions are there. And now we actually test it out. It should actually work, but in this case, it's that we can actually test it out because our mouse mode is actually being captured. So we actually want to disable that for touch controls. So to do that, I'm actually doing that in my pause menu. When the pause menu is hidden and shown, the input mouse mode is captured. So I can just comment that code out because, like I said, we don't want the input mouse mode captured uh, when we're doing this sort of thing for mobile or touch input. So I'm also doing this in the player script when in my function ready so I can un basically comment that line of code as well. So now I should actually be able to test this out. So if I test out the scene again and do start game and move the left virtual joystick as you can see our player actually is already moving around without us having to really do any coding and we just simply define our input actions in the virtual joystick left um, action fields in the inspector and then for the joy virtual joystick right it isn't working because we haven't made it work so we actually have to make that work here and it's going to be the export variables that we saw on the test scene so we actually open up the player uh, script from the test scene, so the test player script, we can actually just copy the two lines of code. So in this case, we're going to copy the two lines of code relating to the joystick right. So just go ahead and copy them and then simply paste them into your player script. So expert node path var joystick right path and then on ready var joystick right virtual joystick is equal to get node joystick right path. Those are the two lines of code that you will need. Then with the right joystick selected, or not with the joystick selected, with the player selected, we want to assign the joystick right path. So simply assign the virtual right, uh, virtual stick right to it. And now we actually have a reference to that virtual joystick right from our player script. So the this these lines of code are handling the mouse rotation, so we don't actually need that anymore since we're going to be making it work with the virtual right stick. So let's actually go ahead and define a new function here. So it's gonna, I'm just going to call it funk rotate player. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. So what we actually want to do in this function is we want to rotate the player. And this is basically actually going to be very similar to how we were doing it with the mouse. So we can actually take the two lines of code that rotated the player with the mouse and copy it. And then we can actually go ahead and paste it into the rotate player. Basically, we're going to, instead of using the event.relative, we're going to be using the output of the joystick directly. So in this case, it's the right joystick. So we raise the event.relative. And like I said, we're going to be using the output of the virtual joystick. So in this case, we called it joystick right, which if we scroll up is basically what's getting the reference to the joystick from our player. So joystick right. And to get the output is literally just dot get output and then parentheses. So that should get the output from the joystick right, which as you see in the code here, that's exactly what they do in the example. And then it's actually going to return a vector too. So the get output for the joystick right returns a vector too. So it has an X and Y value. In this case, we want the X value. And then for the spring arm, we're going to basically do the exact same thing. In this case, we're going to get the output for the Y value. So joystick right dot get output and then dot y, since we want the y value for in this case. 
and we're getting an error here because let me see um so let's just check um and that's because we don't have the proper indenting so up above it was inside an if statement in this case it's does it's not inside an if statement so just make sure that you have the proper indent indentation that uh, the proper indentation if i can speak uh, but yeah basically we're just getting the joystick right output directly and that's how the rotation is going to work so we actually launch and play the scene and start the game it should actually already work so it's actually not working here and i believe that's because i forgot to call the rotate player function so actually make sure to actually call it in your physics process so rotate player now if we test the scene out it should work so let's do start game once more and then if we move the left joystick it should work and then if we move the right one it is actually working it is pretty slow though as you can see here and the reason behind that is because in our code here we're actually multiplying the output by the mouse sensitivity which is the variable we set up at the very top which i believe is set to default to 0.1 which is a pretty low value because the mouse sensitivity actually varies quite a bit so in this case we're just gonna make it be a lot higher in my settings menu and now it should work a lot better. So you basically want to use at least a value of one if you're going to do some sort of sensitivity with it. And as you can see, we're actually, we, we have a fully working player controller that works with touch input. So we can move the player around, rotate the player around, and so forth. So if that's actually all you want for your game, then you're pretty much done. So we can already move, like I said, and we can rotate. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all you need, but if you actually want to add more, such as a button to jump, it's actually really easy to do as well. So to do that, we're going to go back to our game scene here, select the GUI once more, and then basically all we want to do is we want to add a touchscreen button as a child of our GUI. Now you can't actually see it yet because we haven't assigned a texture or sprite to it in the inspector yet. So I'm just going to click the icon.png into the normal uh, field in the inspector. And now we can actually see it. Now you can assign some textures for the press as well if you want and so forth. I'm just going to do it for the normal and then you can just move it to wherever you want essentially and then all we want to do is actually define the action for it in the inspector so all we want to do is specify in this case the jump action so if we press play now and test this out and we click on the button it's in fact actually working and our player is already jumping without having a, to actually go into the code so it's that easy so now you have a fully working player controller that has all the touch input that you want such as moving around rotating and even jumping so if you liked the video and if this video helped you make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing and also, uh, thank you guys so much. We actually hit 2,000 subscribers recently on the channel. So I can't thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, these past few weeks, I know I haven't been really uploading too much. And I've been very inconsistent. So I thank you guys so much for the patience. And I'm really sorry for uh, taking so long to upload. Um, there's, you know, I've been really busy with a lot of stuff. But hopefully, now that things are more settled down, I should be able to release more consistently. That is the idea. So I hope that you guys look to look are looking forward to that new content that I have planned. Anyway, with all that said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then guys, have a wonderful day.